Hello, I'm Dave and this is Logan out once again for a walk in the countryside. Thanks for joining us. Now today we're at the pretty village of Simmonsbury in Dorset. It's about one and a half miles to the west of Bridport and nine miles east of Lyme Regis. And we're going to be walking a roughly four mile route, plus perhaps a small detour from Simmonsbury up to the iconic Colmers Hill, along Hell Lane to North Chiddock and back along part of the Monarch's Way and a sunken lane on our return journey. Now I'm filming at the end of May, it is another glorious sunny day, blue sky, hardly a cloud up there. It should be perfect conditions for walking, so do come along with us. Well, I've parked my car in the village, giving a consideration to residents, of course. And uh, before we sort of kick out into the countryside, let's have a little wander through Simmonsbury itself. Now, Arthur Mee, in his 1939 book, uh, The King's Inland Dorset, described the village as, and I quote, an engaging village among the hills off the Bridport Road, almost every house in it is pleasing to look at. Well, its origins are primarily as an agricultural village, growing flax and hemp for use of uh, makers of ropes and nets in nearby Bridport to the south. The Colfox family have been associated with the village since the 13th century, when it was then owned by Sir Abbey. But it uh, wasn't until the 19th century when the family had bought sufficient land in and around the village and brought together what is now the Simmonsbury estate. The name Simmonsbury derives from well, Sigismund, which is a sort of Viking chief who landed with a raiding party near Bridport and was rather taken by a little round hill which we'll be exploring shortly on the side of the village and he was impressed by a, a warning beacon blazing on the summit. There's a pretty little pub, the Ilchester Arms, and the core of it dates to the 15th century, with additions in the 17th and 20th centuries, and I have seen a, a 1950 photograph of it now, just beyond the pub. I think if I look over the wall here, I should see a little stream. Ah oh, yes, there we go, <laughs> and it's a, a tributary of the river, I think it's Simen, S-I-M-E-N-E, -E, not sure how you pronounce that, but the source is from a spring to the west, and apparently it's got healing properties, a cure for sore eyes, and the river joins the river Brit, which goes through Bridport to West Bay. And that's the back of uh, the Victorian school, you see the church spire in the background. Oh, pretty little village. Just on the left hand side here, lovely little cottage. I think it's called Old Rectory Cottage. And just behind that hedge there is the old rectory, which I think was built in 1730 and was enlarged in 1814. But I think I was reading that it was one of the largest rectories in England. It may well now be a fitness retreat. I'm not 100% sure, but I say it's hidden behind those uh, uh, that hedge there. Well, this quite magnificent church is uh, the St John the Baptist Church. The present building originates from the 14th century, although there was an earlier church on the site. It's a cruciform in design. The nave is from the 14th century, the porch from the 15th century, and the chancel the 17th century. It's also got a north and south transept, a vestry and a central tower. I think it's got six bells. And the belfry is reached from the outside by some narrow steps and had a big restoration in the 1920s. All right, in we go. There's a magnificent uh, wooden door. A huge window over on the, uh, that must be the west side. Gosh, a beautiful church. Wow. Also, you've got the, the pulpit here. And then just move you on a little bit. 
the organ on the left hand side and then just through here I'll put a photograph up of the, uh, the font. Wow, what a terrific stained glass window above the altar there. Lovely with a light coming through. And I love these carvings on the pews either side. A lot of them different animals. We're just on the northern side of the village is the Simmonsbury Estate Manor Yard. The estate covers some 1,500 acres and the manor yard here comprises a home and garden store, a fashion store, a salon, a bike shop, a gift shop, a food shop and a cafe. And I think the old tithe barn is used as a function room and possibly for weddings. And I believe many of the houses in the village are estate houses and rented out. Not 100% sure. Wow, look at the front door there. Shoots Farm. Now, I was reading, I think it was uh, Shoots Farmhouse that was built from trees felled in 1449 and might have been a hall house. I wonder if this was it, but gosh, that uh, door could tell a story for sure. And just looking along a lovely row of um, cottages with uh, thatch on the front and flowers outside. Quite idyllic isn't it? Right so we're gonna leave the village and head sort of northwards down this rather dark lane called Shoots Lane. It's an old drover's lane and we'll be seeing a lot more of it on our return journey. But we're going to go along here and then at some stage we need to look for a footpath that goes off to our left. Well we've found our footpath up to Colmers Hill. We've got an uphill bit now. We're halfway up, good chance to stop for a breather, to admire the view of course and catch our breath back. Looks like just behind me here there's some sort of beacon in the far distance and if I gradually uh, turn the camera around um, hopefully you'll get to see, where are we, there we go, some of the quite glorious scenes to the north, but we're only halfway up. Wow. <laughs> now it is quite windy up here folks so hopefully the wind's not too bad on the audio. But look at it, well obviously that's the, the sea in the far distance. In fact we were walking along the southwest coast path not that long ago when we were at uh, Sea Town and then Eep. And then this is just looking over to the east and there's Simmonsbury down below with the, the church tower there and then just slowly panning around, catching my breath back. <laughs> it was quite a climb, but look at the views here. This is your typical Dorset rolling landscape. Well, of course, being so high up, no surprise seeing a trig point. And of course that will have to be bagged in the customary fashion. <laughs> and here we are on the southern side of the hill. And this Again, I keep going on about the views and the sea looking a real Mediterranean blue. Quite glorious. Of course, uh, Colmers Hill, very much quite an iconic setting. Uh, so many people view it from the A35. It's 127 metres high and uh, a sort of rounded, flattened cone. Locals used to call it Pudding Basin Hill in days gone by. 
I think the original name was uh, Sigmund's Berg. Uh, Berg it was uh, Norwegian for a hill. And the name Colmer's Hill was given in the 19th century, named after the Reverend John Colmer, who was the tenant of the land and rector of Simmonsbury in the early 1800s. It's now owned by the Colfox uh, family and uh, the Simmonsbury estate. And uh, a John Sprake, who was woodman to Thomas Colfox, planted seven Caledonian pines up here during the First World War. Uh, looking down below to the south, uh, a 1950s map shows that there was a, a rifle range here, now long gone. And I was reading that it was used by the Home Guard in the Second World War. It doesn't actually show on an 1891 map or indeed a current map. Well, having spent 10-15 minutes up here just taking in all those views, it's time to move on. So we've now got a, a downhill bit and our next destination, Hell Lane. Right, quick update on the route. We've just come off, I think, Shoots Lane, and we're gonna go down Hell Lane, I think. If not, well, it's a lovely day to get lost, but fairly certain it's down this way. Oh my goodness, now, I don't know if you're gonna to see too much because it is very dark down here. This is what you call a sunken lane. Apparently it's 10 metres deep in places and it, well, probably started off as a drover's road, but it's been worn away by human feet, hooves of horses and cattle and wheels of carts over the centuries, especially when they were transporting stone from a nearby quarry. But, well, it's certainly mysterious and atmospheric. You know, it's like it's got its own little environment in here. I mean, I've got birds twittering away, but uh, and ferns either side and lots of carvings on the, uh, the banks. Oh, it's quite mysterious. Well, we're nearly at the bottom of Hell Lane. <laughs> that was the most amazing uh, bit of uh, path that I've uh, ever walked upon, I think. Um, it did get a bit muddy towards the end, um, so probably not a walk to do in the winter. And in fact, just probably just see over my shoulder there, it um, almost has developed into a very shallow stream, a couple of inches uh, deep with a, a, a hard bottom. But as I say, it's not impassable. Right, I'm afraid this is about as best we're going to do for a dog dip today, fella. <laughs> but an opportunity for some fresh water. Oh, no blackberries yet. A couple of months away, mate. Now, I think this is the upper reaches of the River Winifred, which uh, is about five kilometres long. It rises at Hardown Hill near Ryle to the north of here. And flows south through Chiddock and out to sea at Seatown. In fact, 
We've seen the mouth of the river at uh, Sea Town when we did our walk there. Well, having come down Hell Lane, I see there's a road close sign here. What's this? Is it a temporary closure of Hell Lane Arch for vehicles uh, prohibited? So it must be a byway. So it's okay for for walkers. Phew. <laughs> Okay, well before we start heading back towards Simmonsbury, let's have a little look round North Chiddock. And this is, uh, what's this, Chiddock Grange, holiday cottages. Very pretty too with the thatch. What a delightful little country lane. Oak tree in front of me and cow parsley and buttercups on the banks. So uh, now we need to look for, uh, here we go, footpath sign on the left. A slightly unusual tree bending over there in the uh, little triangle there. <laughs> you can guess which way the wind normally blows around these parts. Very much southwesterlies, which is the top end of North Chiddock. Lovely old barn building on the left here. and. Wow, look at these quite delightful thatched cottages on the right with the roses outside and some wisteria as well. And then another thatch building here. So beautiful. And oh, look at these two over here with your sort of typical cottage garden in front. Now just passing by this cottage here, the plaque up on the wall, what does that say? Chrissy Squire, 1894-1976, the Chiddock Egg Lady lived here. Oh well, I'll have to look that one up when I get back. Oh gosh, look at this, Manor Cottage with wisteria around her. <laughs> Terrific door. I wonder how old that is. Well this is as far south uh, through North Chiddock that I'm going to go but this is what I wanted to come and see. The Church of Our Lady, Queen of Martyrs and St Ignatius. Originally it was a chapel converted from a barn in 1802 and it was transformed into the present church in 1874. Uh, the manor house, which is just behind it, was built in the 19th century. And it's very much an Italian style. Indeed, the front recalls the early churches in Tuscany. But there's a fascinating story around these parts. Seven Chiddock men, three priests and four laymen, were put to death for their Catholic faith between 1587 and 1642. And the church here is very much a memorial to them and all those who kept their faith throughout the times of bloody repression. And there was a castle to the south of here that was destroyed in the Civil War. Now it, it doesn't look as though we can actually go around the side of the church and look at it from <laughs> the outside which is a, a shame, but um, the good news is that it's open, so we can have a little look inside. All right, here we go, come on fella. Wow, well I appreciate it is dark in here, so usual story, I might have to put some photos up, but incredible, the superb organ behind me here, and a very ornate roof with paintings, in fact, there seem to be paintings of people all along the side, and then paintings depicting presumably scenes from the Bible, either side. Let's have a little wander through. Goodness me, that is an impressive altar. And look, I, 
I think that's the sun that's coming through there. Must be. It's not uh, artificial light. And I'll put a photograph up of inside the, the dome above. Absolutely stunning. Well, just on the side of the church, there's a little village history exhibition. Oh, it's lovely and light in here. <laughs> there's all sorts of uh, interesting uh, objects. Gosh, what's that up on the wall there? A man trap. Ooh, that looks a bit gruesome, doesn't it? Gosh, this is fascinating. And some uh, one of those old cannons by the looks of things down there. Well, we're now going to leave North Chiddick. What a pretty little place, full of uh, amazing houses and cottages. So we've got two choices. We could go back up Hell Lane, <laughs> or we can take a footpath, um, say in a sort of north easterly direction, that will pick up the Monarch's Way and then get us back onto Shoots Lane. Well folks, this is one of those walks where I've gone slightly the wrong way, but I'm generally still going in the right way. If you know what I mean, some of the footpath signs have been tricky to follow, but I know where I am now. <laughs> but if I just uh, show you some of the views from up here again, it is quite windy. So there's uh, a Colmers Hill in the background, we're going to head to the north of it. And then this is just panning round and uh, well, that's some superb views here. That's, uh, well, that'll be Chidduck down there and then beautiful view of the sea beyond. Well, we've now temporarily joined the Monarch's Way, that 625 mile long distance path that represents the escape route of Charles II after his defeat at the Battle of Worcester in 1651. It goes from what Worcester to Bristol to Yeovil to Shoreham. I say we're only going to do a tiny little section today. <laughs> Just a little update on the route folks. At this point we come off the Monarch's Way. There's no footpath sign but there is a sort of farm track footpath that vaguely looks as though it should be the one that's on the map. Coolmers Hill is over there, that's where we're going. I just stopped by to admire this crop gently uh, wafting in the wind really is coming on now. I think it looks like barley, I'm not 100% sure, but uh, the year really is beginning to shoot on by. Final section of the walk, just about to come into Simmonsbury, so we'll say goodbye to the hill up there for one last time and keep our fingers crossed that the Ilchester Arms is open so that we can uh, pop in there for research purposes for the video. Well folks, we've come to the end of our walk. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please do give us a thumbs up and a like and do leave a comment and do check out our Facebook page, Dave's Countryside Walks. 
Well, unfortunately, the pub was closed. We're filming on a Tuesday and it's closed it's on Mondays and Tuesdays. But fortunately, uh, the uh, Simmons Street Estate Cafe is open for a nice cold lager. So uh, until we meet again, thanks for watching and cheerio. Ah, uh, good boy. You've got some water and I think I've got some treats. Yeah.